Welcome to Wholeness in Motion Foundation Series number six. And today's topic is adaptation and learning. So today, the area of adaptation kind of flows through all aspects of our life. And I'm going to start us out with understanding a way we use that adaptation in wholeness in motion classes. Um, so we'll do that. I'm gonna show this to you um, in terms of what in the common culture is called stretching. So a classic stretch that I've watched musicians do a lot, especially those who are playing um, string instruments and so forth, is to do something like this, take their hand and, and go here and then go here. Does that look familiar? Or, and then the same thing would be to do this. Don't do this too hard. <laughs> this is nothing we ever do in homeless emotion. <laughs> but, so that's, that's one kind of stretch, a passive stretch, and it's been out in the world a lot. In homeless emotion, do this with me. This would be to get at the same goal of what somebody might want, which is more range and flexibility from that stretch. Or, you know, as long as that activity is rooted to a goal, which we've looked at before, it's really important. What do I want that? Why am I doing that? What's it to give me? Then I can assess if it's working. So if our goal is more flexibility and range, then, and to sort of loosen up, then try, try this. I'm gonna uh, extend my fingers back so I feel like they could touch my elbow behind me and gently and easily try to touch my then forearm with my fingertips, and then just draw lots of easy um, circles and come together and play with all the things, my, where my hand is in relation to my lower arm. Then I might do something if it, for, the, for the movement that this passive stretch was, we might say, oh, touch your nose, touch your tag, reach up behind you, up to the sky, Put your tag here, open up, or just draw a big circle in the world in space. So here are two different strategies for the same goal. And both of those strategies or approaches or exercise, whatever you want to call it, those activities are rooted in completely different understanding of how the system gets flexibility, how the system works, basically how the system adapts and learns and changes. So the passive stretch, well, I'm gonna just speak from how in homeless in motion we understand it. So when someone is doing passive stretch from the understanding of how the musculature adapts, what they're actually doing is the, the, the actual muscular activation is kind of turned off. There's no engagement and we're pulling with something else and we're basically pulling on the casing of the muscles. If you think of a muscle like a sausage, the protein bits, the musculature is in the, in the center and connective tissue flows way all the way through it and around it. And when you do this, you're, you're pulling on that, that casing and it's kind of stretching out. You'll feel after you do it, that can move more. But in a few minutes, it'll just come back hopefully to its length, but while it's actually stretched out, the muscular part is much more vulnerable because the purpose of that connective tissue is to protect the, the protein that's the muscular part inside. So we actually set ourselves up for danger with passive stretching and it's less and less out there in the world. Whereas when we activate the whole system and actually have a, instead of thinking of a hand I'm trying to touch, I've got a a, a reason for moving, then all the layers of my musculature can shift and change. And instead of having a momentary change in range or flexibility, I actually have more chance of creating functional length. If I feel like something's been short, shorter over time to make it a musculature longer, the little sections inside the muscles, we have to add some, it gets functionally longer. Or if we need it to hold, keep us together more, like as I get older, I actually want less range in my hip sock, just enough range to do my life. I don't want to be able to do a split anymore. I want to be held <laughs> together as other tissues 
um, get a little over slack. So uh, then I might get must the functional length can shorten, kind of like links in a chain. And the thing is, it's not even just in the musculature, all kinds of things get pulled and drawn when we do a passive stretch and including arteries and veins and but the layers of us are always there, even if we think we're just activating one thing. And that's true. The full range of all of me gets available when I do what we call luxuriating and moving and uh, pushing and pulling. You won't in homeless in motion hear the word stretch probably ever. Um, because it's just one side. The musculature gets strong, it gets flexible, and it has full range. So we use words like luxuriate or move or do this to get at the goal of being having full range of motion for the tasks I need, having enough strength and power and vitality. So, um, and all that, everything we just covered, that business of muscles, you know, adding functional left, adding sections or momentary changes. The adaptation is the ability of our system to experience how we're going about life and the forces that play on us and adapt to support us to be able to do what we want to do. And it adapts in multiple ranges. So if we talk, when we looked at the tonal um, work before, if, if I have very, I live constantly in low tone and this kind of heaviness, then over time, the back of my heel might grow bone spurs because I've got so much force there, the bone thinks I better grow here, or I might wear out one side of my hip socket. So the, uh, that's adapting too, in a way that in the lofty goal we don't want, but how we're going about living is actually teaching the tissues that this is what, this is what your other than conscious wants, the way you go about it. And the same thing, if I'm constantly, um, stimulated into a, a grip and a rush. I'm rushing around all the time. Often we'll have the same plantar fasciitis or have different conditions that are really your system beautifully adapting to how you go about life. So when we can understand symptoms and issues like that from this way of, wow, look at how amazing my system is adapting. It's so great I have this back pain because it's showing me that I'm constantly bending at my waist in a place that doesn't actually have a joint. Then I can figure out ways to move so that there isn't a force focused on that part over and over again that is actually what wears it out. So adapt this, this adapting nature of our tissues on every level. Um, Work, works can work to you know feel like it's a problem, but actually the problem is the doorway into showing us the beauty of how our system works to to adapt and change. And this uh, piece of adaptation in the structural and functional side, um, that understanding is embedded in everything we do when it comes to the movement is to set you up so that you are you are moving in such a way where forces are distributed. So it's less likely to create injury where you are uh, setting yourself up so the adaptation like works fully for you and in the individual work or if you have a question, what my actual skill set in this is to help you see how the symptom you've got might make perfect sense in this amazing system you've got, and what might you want to explore and tweak so your system gets the opportunity to readapt to the new way you are going through life so that you won't have this message coming to you, this sensory information that's trying to wake you up to something you're we're fighting ourselves a little bit when we fight how the system works how the universe works 
that's when we usually get symptoms. And so when I'm rushing around trying to be do everything faster than is actually possible, the tissues grip and grab, and I get symptoms. The problem isn't in me or in my body. It's in just how I'm approaching life, which is trying to do more than is possible in a day. Change it on that level. And generally, the back pain or the digestive issues fall away. And knowing how to hunt for that is, is part of the complementary work to the group classes is that what we do in the in individual work generally. So this is part one of adaptation in the structural and functional side. The next video on adaptation is really the, is like part B, which is learning, which is skill acquisition. And that, that, that it's the very same mechanism, but used in what in our culture we call uh, learning. All right, thank you.